Okay, so we're going to talk about um, sh shapes and logos today. And we're going to start by building a shape that also will um, have a very sort of basic illustration. We're going to add some letters to it and we'll merge everything using our shape builder. Um, so we're going to start with our shape tools. And by default, you probably have your rectangle tool visible in your toolbar. If you hold your mouse down over that tool, you'll see the flyout menu, which includes a polygon tool. We're going to select the polygon tool. And we're also going to um, hold our mouse down and drag, and I'm sorry, mine. by default you probably have a hexagon shape. So I'm just dragging my mouse out to show you the shape. And if I wanted to control the number of sides, I can press up or down arrows on my keyboard to increase or decrease the number of sides. So I'm going to decrease it to a triangle. And again, f to use the arrows and to visibly see the changes, I'm driving with both hands. So my right hand is holding the mouse down and my left hand is controlling the arrows. And um, that gives me this triangle. Now right now my triangle is a little crookedy, but if I wanted it perfectly flat on the bottom, I can also hold shift and that will sort of lock the base of the triangle to be a, a totally flat 180. Okay, so again, driving with both hands. So right now I'm holding my mouse down with my right hand, pressing shift with my left hand, release my buttons, and it sets down a triangle. Okay, so that gives me my triangle, <clears throat> and by default, my triangle um, does have these uh, live shape points, and what those do are they give you rounded corners. So we are going to round out our triangle because we're going to make this a friendly shape and typically friendly shapes are defined with nice soft corners and round edges. So I'm just going to round this out a little bit. <clears throat> that looks pretty good. And uh, what we'll do is we're going to create um, a triangle that will also look like a little mountain top and we'll make a logo for the state of Colorado. All right, so a couple of things that are going to have to happen. We're going to uh, increase the width of our stroke around this triangle. So with the object selected, using my selection tool, V is my shortcut key for that. I'm going to take a look at my stroke menu. And if I want to see more, I can select stroke options. I'll increase the weight to be pretty thick. Okay, logos um, want to be visible from a distance. So just like uh, the ice cream demo that we did earlier for icons, um, we want to make the lines and the stroke a little bit heavier than we would maybe want to create for um, a normal illustration that you would see in print um, because we do want to be able to read the logo from a distance. So you need things to be bold and clear. So I'm going to increase this. At, um, now mine's at 22 points, but depending on the size of your triangle, right, um, it might be different. So really just adjust the stroke weight so that it looks nice and, and thick. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm also going to do another thing. I'm actually going to align my stroke to the inside of my path. And that's in this fourth option, align stroke to inside. Um, by default, it's always centered, but I'm going to align it to the inside. That looks pretty good. Okay. And there's a reason to do th for doing that. Okay, because we're going to expand this object. And when we expand it, um, if the path is centering everything, we're going to get sort of twice as many paths and by aligning it to the inside or outside you'd get less paths. Okay, so we're just simplifying things for us. So align to the inside and um, what we're going to do now is we're going to expand the object. So expanding objects, um, what it does is it takes the characteristics, either fill or stroke, and it will expand them 
Okay. Um, right now, actually, I just want to double check with you. Your fill may be white by default, but we can turn that to none. Okay, just make sure that fill swatches forward and then the none swatches just down and to the right. Um, I think I'm going to start with no fill so that when we're expanding this object, it's only expanding the characteristic that exists, which is this black stroke. Okay, so object menu, we're going to select expand appearance and you want to make sure the object is selected. And uh, when we expand the appearance, what is going to happen is it's going to give me a new complex path and I'm just going to make this panel visible so you can see it in this video. And I'll just, I'm just going to open up this layers panel and since layers is so important, I'm just going to place it right here so you can see it. Okay, so right now we have a compound path and uh, before we had a shape. Okay, so now we have something called a compound path and uh, what a compound path means is you have a shape with a piece cut out of it. Okay, so that's, that's not bad. Alright, and what we're going to do is we're going to take our pen tool and we're just going to draw some zigzag lines that um, cross the top because we're going to define an area where there's a little snow cap on this mountain. Okay, so taking my pen tool, I'm just going to start a path and we can adjust this if it's not perfect. A path that looks like this and it looks a little funny because right now it has um, a black fill and we actually want to invert this. So we actually want a black line or a black stroke with no fill and um, in fact we could turn off fill and stroke okay and that's that's actually better so I'll turn off both fill and stroke so you can see so I'm just building a zigzaggy path it's not perfect I will fix it with my selection tool in one second when I'm done with this path um, I don't need to close it I'll just press V on my keyboard to go back to my selection tool and in fact if you press A you'll get your direct selection tool A for direct selection tool and what I'll do is I'm just gonna make some minor adjustments to where these are I'm just thinking okay I want it to look like snow on a mountain that looks okay we can adjust it again later and then I'll take my direct selection tool and I'm going to select both of these paths and I'm going to use my shape builder to merge this together. So remember to select both the complex path and the this sort of invisible path here. You can just drag over them with your selection tool but you do want to make sure that both paths are selected you know they're selected because it colored squares next to this meatball. And then with those selected, I'll use my Shape Builder tool. And I'm just going to merge the interior shape here. Let's close that. The interior shape here with the black stroke. So I'll drag one time to merge those and then I will drag one more time to just merge this black stroke with that larger shape. Looks really good. And I'm done with my shape builder so I'll go back to my selection tool and I will select this larger object and give it a fill color. And I'm going to give it like an army green I guess is what you would call it or like a mountain green. Fill that in. That looks great make sure that your stroke is set to none. Remember the none swatch is this white swatch uh, with a red strike through it. Looks fabulous. So we have a little mountain shape that is going to represent Colorado. If you still want to make adjustments to this, you can use A for your direct selection tool and make adjustments to any of these points here. Okay. And now what we'll do is we're going to type two letters, CO for Colorado. So take my tool, type CO. Um, I'm going to expand this to be larger. Just scale it up. Okay, to scale it up, I just use my selection tool. You can always use your 
points here in your toolbar for type. Um, but I just drag this, this corner, hold shift um, to keep the scale and uh, so it doesn't get warped or anything. And I scale up and down. Okay, so I'm just using shift and scaling from this uh, selection corner. And uh, the typeface that I have right now, or the font, um, I don't love it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to be something a little bit thicker. Oh, Alfarn looks good. You might have different fonts, but you can just scroll through here and find a nice, bold, round, geometric font. Nutraface is good. Um, you may not have all the fonts that I have. Okay, but choose a, a solid font, nothing decorative that has lots of extra details. Um, so that looks pretty good. And then um, if we really wanted to, we can uh, select the text or type and the shape. We can use our alignment options, which should be in your option toolbar at the top of the workspace if you have two objects selected. I'm going to align um, the horizontal align center option is what you'd click just center those and then what I'm gonna do is again just like I did with my shape earlier I'm gonna take this text navigate up to my object and I'm going to select expand and I'm going to expand the object and then what we'll do is we're gonna select all of our objects on screen here and use our shape builder one more time and this is my favorite trick that the shape builder did this when when they designed the shape builder to punch out holes my god it saved me so much time after years of having to build complex paths um, so with the shape builder all you do if you want to cut out from this bold uh, triangular shape we're going to hold option okay so one hand I'm using my left hand option. Uh, that would be Alt if you have a PC. That's going to give me a negative next to my cursor. And what that does is it lets me punch out this shape. So Option, the negative, and then driving with both hands. So Option, click. Or if you have a PC, it's Alt, click. You're looking for that negative sign. Click. And what that does is that punches out and I'm going to delete these extra paths that are showing up here. That punches out holes into the shape so that you have a single shape, even though we built several shapes here, right? We built a triangle, we built a zigzag, we have type. But by using your shape builder to punch out, now what we do is we have a single compound shape or path. And, um, and then you never have to worry about individual shapes moving around or shifting and you can even just change the color when you feel like it so if you want it to be a different color you can change the color of the entire object and it's great for stickers it's great for anything okay so that's that's how uh, you can start to explore the idea of building a logo so a really simple shape come up with a very simple but understandable symbol or illustration, merge them using your shape builder tools, um, and then add text or letters that can assist with identifying uh, that, that particular oops, business or whatever you're representing. So this would be a great little sticker for Colorado. Save this and submit it to Canvas. And I apologize for all the emails coming in. Um, remember that you can save um, as a PDF. Okay, if you wanna save it as a JPEG, you just have to do um, export for screens. Okay, export for screens will give you all the other options. So you can always choose JPEG or PNG or SVG. You can even do a PDF and change the um, dimensions of the of the exported item. Okay, and that's the tutorial.